Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode in the Multiverse video series. Today we're going to learn how to do distributed deep learning with TensorFlow and R. Now if you want to, a quick recap on why distributed learning is important and how does it work, you should take a look at our introdu introduction to distributed deep learning video. So actually, in that particular video, in the introduction to deep learning video, we kind of like ended up in this particular web page, which is the TensorFlow training, distributed training guide. And kind of like as a very quick recap on our previous video, we mentioned that there's different strategies when you're distri uh, performing distributed training, but we narrowed it down to using the multi-worker mirror strategy. Now, this happens to be the only supported version uh, of distributed training currently in TensorFlow and, and Keras, but it also happens to be the best and most efficient version. So, um, you know, if again, if you need a recap, just watch that video. What we're gonna focus on today is like, how do we actually perform distributed training in R? And uh, if you were to look at this guide, um, you're gonna see that there is a concept here called uh, the TF config. So the TF config is just an environment variable that defines your cluster. It basically tells TensorFlow, these are the machines that I'm using. And by the way, uh, these are their addresses. You can connect them in this way. And you know, like this is the index of this particular machine. So it just defines the cluster. So we'll have to do that in R and we also have to run our code in each of the machines. Now, actually, before we get into this, before we get into you know how to run the code and why not, uh, it's important to mention that we need you know like first as a prerequisite we need more than one machine, right? Now to kind of like help you out with this video and for those of you that might want to follow up with this, um, I created a little kind of like README file under mlverse slash distributed, which basically contains uh, the code and also some of the resources that you might need to set up your cluster. So as you would expect. Since we're doing uh, distributed training, we need more than one machine, right? We, um, yeah, and where do you get additional computers from? That's like a whole separate story, but a very easy way of getting multiple machines from is using a cloud provider. Now, in this case, I use Amazon EC2, which is basically allows you just to kind of like log in to AWS and launch an instance. You don't need to use AWS. You can also use Google Cloud, Azure, or why not? Uh, but you know they all work pretty similarly. You launch a new instance. Uh, in this case, I'm going to launch an AMI instance, which is Amazon Linux, which I believe is kind of like uh, equivalent to Red Hat, I believe. And then I set up uh, kind of the machines to use just to have uh, kind of like two CPUs, eight gigabytes of memory, and um, I made sure that they were connected on the same network, which is important. I gave them around four gigabytes of storage to each of them. And then I created a new security group, which we're gonna talk about it. And then you, you can basically just launch them and create a new key pair. This key pair is basically your access to the remote machine that we're gonna use to connect to in order to install additional dependencies. And yeah, that's, that's it. Once you have them, uh, once you have your machines created, you should be able to uh, connect to them. Now, before you connect to them, what I had to do is I had to change the security group. And what I did here is I basically added two additional rules, which basically tells the cluster machines to connect, be able to connect to each of them. And uh, in this particular case, what I did is I do I, I run uh, edit inbound rules, and then I said add rule all TCP address, uh, all, all TCP network kind of like packets uh, should be allowed within the cluster. And then I had added another one, which I believe is not needed, uh, which also enables UDP traffic. Again, um, yeah, you might not need UDP, but I strongly recommend you that you kind of like make sure that your cluster is properly configured in uh, and where the cluster machines are available through the same um, network and that the network ports are open. All right, so far so good. Then um, once you have those four machines ready, you need to install additional software. In this particular case, the software that I need installed is R for obvious reasons, and also Python since uh, TensorFlow requires uh, Python. Uh, 
So actually what I end up doing, which, um, you know, you can do it in different ways. You basically need to open a terminal. Uh, it could be, you know, your Windows or Mac terminals. I use the RStudio terminal. And then I basically connect it to that machine using that particular key, um, key file. And then that's it, you're connected to the particular machine. And then I, I did this four times to connect to each of the machines. And then I went ahead and installed R, and then I also installed Python in each of them, which, you know, some of the machines you can see that that's exactly kind of like what I did. So once you have uh, kind of like R and Python installed, you could potentially just launch an R session and, you know, like run your TensorFlow code here. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, you could you could continue the tutorial in, in such way, just uh, kind of like sending the code directly to the remote R session. Uh, what I end up doing instead is um, I end up installing R Studio server with these two lines of code and creating an R Studio user. So if you if you get to install R Studio server, then uh, then the nice thing is that you can just log into R Studio and uh, basically you know run the same remote code uh, but with a much nicer interface. Anyways, so you um, again, this is kind of like just covering the prerequisites. There's nothing super interesting about this apart from make sure you have four machines that they all have like R and R Studio and Python and you know like they're connected on the same network. Yeah. So now now we get to the interesting piece, which is like okay, how do we train uh, deep learning net uh, models uh, in a distributed fashion? And for this, what you what I recommend doing is uh, well, first of all, you need to install a few additional dependencies. You want to install TensorFlow and you want to install Keras. So go ahead and install TensorFlow and install Keras. However, as of this um, as of this video, uh, there is a, an additional fix that we need on Keras to support distributed training in R. So um, go ahead and also install the remotes package and then install Keras from R Studio. Now it might be the case that in a few months, it's probably gonna be the case that uh, the CRAN version of Keras is updated, so you probably will be able to install Keras directly from CRAN. But in the meantime, just go ahead and install the packages in each of the uh, instances. So basically what I did is I run uh, these installation comments here on the second instance, third instance, and then the fourth instance. Now we also need to install TensorFlow, the actual uh, TensorFlow runtime as in the Python packages. And we do that by running TensorFlow install TensorFlow on each of the machines again. And then uh, last but not least, um, I usually recommend that you know you check that your version is the version that you actually think that you're installing, which in this case, we are using TensorFlow 2.0, which has been released and it's available for us to use. Right, now, uh, if you've listened to some of my, our, um, distributed training, you know, uh, videos about Apache Spark, I usually recommend that you get your code to work locally first. Uh, training, uh, doing distributed training usually just makes things harder. Uh, you know, you need to worry about like things like networking and why not. Um, so usually what I recommend is that you first get your code to work in, uh, in a local environment, right? So uh, in this particular case, I'm gonna use this particular machine on the cluster as my local environment. And I'm just gonna use it to train a simple MNIST uh, kind of like um, example. So yeah, that's that's all it's it, it it is. So I'm gonna run it, and I'm gonna and again like the point of this is not to train distributed. The point of this is to make sure that everything is working properly. And as you can see here, we just run the code and it works properly. And you know it has an accuracy of 0 0.05, which is really low because uh, you know we didn't even run through all the epochs. Cool, so yeah, now we're up to the place where we actually can start thinking on how to distribute this particular code into multiple machines. So as I was mentioning, the first thing that we want to do is define the configuration file, which we can do quite easily uh, from R as well. Uh, one of the caveats here is that you want to get the IP addresses of each of the machines, right? Um, one way of doing that is just to run in uh, in the RStudio terminal if config, which will give you the IP address of this particular machine. And then you would have to repeat the same process on each of the machines to get the IP addresses on your cluster. And then you just you can just define them on your configuration file. You also want to specify a port. 
Um, the port doesn't need to be different. I chose different ports, but you know, it's it's a port that each machine will use to receive incoming communication from other TensorFlow nodes. All right, so that's that's all we need to do for the configuration file. Um, the, the next step is we need to define our strategy, which as we mentioned earlier in this video, we want to use the multi-worker mirrored strategy. Um, one caveat here is you want to make sure that this strategy is defined as the very first lines of uh, TensorFlow code that you specify on your model. Um, so if you don't do, you basically, when you run training, you're gonna get an error from Tensor TensorFlow explaining you that that's what you should be doing. So anyway, so we define the strategy first, and then you might want to adjust the number of workers and why not, and the batch size, and also modify your model to use, you know, some of the other things that you would consider appropriate, right? When training models at scale. So um, yeah, so in this particular case, you know, like we're actually training the same model over and over in the different nodes. So it's just the same no, uh, the same code running. But uh, as I mentioned from the previous video, you might want to consider splitting your data set across the different machines. So if, we, you, were, if you were to be training, say, ImageNet, which contains millions of images, um, you might want to actually split the images into multiple, in, into the multiple worker nodes in the cluster and kind of like just train a subset on each of the worker nodes. All right, so, and uh, the next step is we want to use the strategy scope that we defined, and this only applies to the, the model definition and the model compilation. So uh, we're gonna uh, kind of like grab all our compilation and definition of the model in the strategy scope. And that's about it. Um, now we're ready to train in a distributed cluster without having to change uh, much of our code at all. So the next step is basically to distribute our code to each of the machine by copy pasting them and changing the index. So you want to definitely change the index in each of the machines. So as you can see, you know, like this is this has, for instance, index set to three because it's the third machine in the cluster. Um, this one has the index set, set to two, uh, set to one, and on this one uh, here is set to zero. That's that's really the only change that you need to do across your cluster is exactly the same code, just with a different index for each of the machines in your cluster. And then we can go ahead and run it. And one peculiar thing to notice is that, uh, well, actually, I should mention that you definitely want to restart your R session before running uh, your distributed code. So let's just do that. And then after after your code, uh, after your R session is restarted, then we can go ahead and run this on each of the machines. So I'm gonna run this on this particular machine first. And um, one thing to notice is that control is not going to get back to the R session until all the worker nodes are properly registered within the uh, distributed strategy scope. So as you can see here, basically my R session is hanging, waiting for the other machines to join, which is good because it means that distributed training is working. Uh, however, you know, it's, it can be tricky to troubleshoot. So if your session hangs uh, when you're defining the scope, it probably means that you have a networking issue or that you're, uh, you know, like that you're not, you don't have all the machines that you claim you have in your cluster defined. But once all the machines joined, we should be able to see TensorFlow communicating with the other machines. And then the session, as you can see here, uh, the R session is, uh, you know, control is given back to the R session and we can continue executing code. So the last step to execute is just to train our models, which is what we're gonna do. And again, we need to run the exact same code in each of the machines. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're doing manually, which is getting a little bit tedious, but uh, there's, uh, you know, it's like a great way to learn how things are changing. And again, you know, it's pretty fast. It just finished training across all the machines in this particular cluster. Now, something really interesting to notice is that the accuracy is actually higher than in our local run. And uh, if we go back here, we can see that the accuracy was 0 0.05 for, um, for the same amount of epochs, three epochs. And our accuracy now went up almost twice fold to 0 0.10. Now, this is happening because, as we mentioned on the 
introduction to deep learning video, the gradients are being shared between the uh, machines on this cluster. So even though each machine is training the absolutely same thing with different data, um, with the same data actually, uh, the gradients are being shared and the model is actually improving accuracy just by using more machines. Now, you usually don't want to use multiple machines just to increase accuracy. You want to use multiple machines when training is too slow or you have too much data, but it's just great to see that even with, um, with the same iterations, we see the accuracy going up when using multiple machines. Now, this, uh, this opens up a lot of really cool, interesting possibilities. Uh, one of them is if you were to take a look at this blog post from FastAI, they used to have the record of training with the least amount of time and the least cost uh, when training ImageNet, which is a pretty, pretty well-known data set uh, of images and uh, classification problem to categorize them. And um, yeah, so basically what they did on this particular blog post that I wanna share is that uh, they follow a similar approach to what we're doing right now, which is uh, they use EC2 machines. In this particular case, they use an EC2 machine with eight NVIDIA GPUs. And they also use, uh, I believe, yeah, 16 AWS instances. So they basically kind of like, uh, you know, like started up 16 machines and each of, the, each of the machines had eight GPUs, and then they connected to this particular, to each of the, um, to each of the particular nodes of the cluster, and they, they run the, their image net classification, and they were able to do that in just 18 minutes. Now, they didn't actually manually remote connect it to each of the machines. They actually use a scheduler um, to, you know, like not have to manually start the instances, turn them off, and, you know, connect to them, and why not? Um, one of the things that I want to explore in subsequent videos is to try to use Apache Spark uh, basically to get us out of having to copy paste code and manually configuring each of the machines and why not. So we can also use, you know, like cluster uh, managers like Apache Spark to let us uh, simplify the process of distributing data to each of the nodes and then training and, you know, like uh, distributing code as well. But uh, that's going to be for another video. In the meantime, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them on Twitter or maybe leave them on as questions under the YouTube comments. So thank you so much uh, for listening and um, see you soon.